Welcome to Mortgage Talk 101 here on Super Talk 1270. Time to look behind the numbers. Buying, selling, refinancing, Mortgage Talk 101 addresses real issues in real estate. Now, live from the Super Talk 1270 studios, here's Mortgage Talk 101 host, Joe Sheehan. Good morning, Bismarck Man. And uh, this is not Joe Sheehan again. Two, two weeks in a row, Jim. Dave two Flo- weeks in a row. Dave Floor here, Mr. Housing from North Dakota Housing Finance Agency. Here with Jim Walsh. Hello. Joe's in the Bakken today. He's supposed to be calling. He's he's going to call in, he said. He's in the Bakken. Yeah, what's with that guy? I saw this picture of him this week. He grown his hair out and he grew a beard. Yeah. He looks like a dang hippie. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, I think he's... He, yeah, maybe he's going to change professions or something and become a, <laughs> okay. a a roadie or something. He plays guitar, I think. So okay. Maybe maybe he's going to do something here. I don't know. Rock and we'll roll. Find him. He, Joe's going to call. He said he's going to try and call in. He said the uh, the cell phone service up there is a little spotty. Yeah. He said it was. He was even uh, calling people locally up there and it was dropping out on him. So um, I suppose their cell phone towers are a little bit uh, busy. I would imagine. There. You would think so. Yeah. But anyway, we're here, Mortgageville 101, uh, Mortgage Talk 101, Mortgageville. It's a sunny day out there. It's a pretty nice day. Yeah. Nice fall day, Jim. Not too shabby. All right. You've been up working early this morning. Woo! Right? Working hard no, at it already? Not that early. Not that early? Okay. All right. Now, okay. next week, I'm doing the early show you're doing again early. on 98.7. Okay. So, this week, you're taking it easy. This week, I'm sleeping in. Sleeping in. Next up week. At 10 o'clock in the morning. Next week. Tough gig. Early. Yeah. Okay. How early week, do you start? I get up at 4. Up at four and I on get in air. here. I I just uh, get up at four, quick shower, rinse off, jump in the car. I'm here by about four thirty because I don't live that far away. Oh, okay, and I get ready. Uh, first hour, five o'clock uh, is just music intensive, as we like to say. Yes. We're just uh, keeping the hits a coming. Okay, and then we start to get into the real nitty gritty stuff between six and nine. Okay, all right. And then okay. after nine, it's ten in a row. We go into what we call the office mode for all the folks listening at work. All right. So hey, come and l- next week listen to Jim on yeah. the morning show starting early on ninety eight point seven. You got a nine cool point eight point seven. Got to get up early to listen yeah. to Jim. Got to get week. up pretty early in the morning, there. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk a little uh, mortgage rates. How about that? All right. As we always do here on uh, Mortgage Talk 101, we have the Freddie Mac uh, Weekly Survey, Mortgage Market Survey. Now, folks, this is uh, the survey goes back for the last week, and it's an average, so it's already maybe a little bit out of date. But actually, I think rates are probably even gotten better since the survey numbers. Uh, but last week, uh, the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage averaged 4.12%. Uh, down from last week when it averaged 4.19, so a significant jump. And a year ago, the 30-year fixed rate was at 4.23%. Uh, so we are 10 basis points below uh, last year at this time. The 15-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 3.3%, uh, down from last week when it averaged 336 And last year, the 15-year firm was at 3.31, so that is almost the same as it was last year. We're right on the same number. So if you are out there refinancing or thinking about it and you wanted to drop from a 20-year or a 30-year mortgage and you want to refinance into some a shorter term and pay your house off sooner, you could get a rate down there at close to 3%. That's a heck of a good deal, Jim. Yeah. I think we could work with that. So if you're thinking about that, now is probably a great time. Rates have dropped considerably. Uh, in the last week, uh, it would be a good time to probably lock rates in. Or if you're just thinking about it, get in there, talk to your loan officer, and see uh, see what they think also. All right, um, let's do a little uh, by the numbers here. Uh, our friend Michael Higley uh, that we get every week. Uh, let's see, what's some interesting stuff we've got, we've got this week, Jim? Um Let's see. Do you know that oh, um, 48% of current retirees exited the labor force earlier than they had planned uh-huh. as a result of health issues, downsizing by an employer, or the need to become a caregiver for an ailing family member? Okay. So that, you know, back in the day of my grandpas and grandmas and all that stuff, uh, you know, you didn't have the two worker households. Right. And, so, you know, somebody was there to take care of the grandparents, so to speak, almost, yeah. um, you know, to 
you know, maybe they were still living in their own place, but hey, you know, someone who's there to watch them every day, make sure things were going good. And that's, you know, we have a, a lot of two worker households and boy, somebody really is ailing. You do have to make some kind of commitment. What do we Absolutely. do with, what do we do with uh, mom and grandma and grandpa and dad, et cetera. So that's a, something different. A lot of people are facing that. Um, and certainly, you know, own health issues and, you know, downsizing and by an employer. We know that that happened a lot in the last uh, few years. Um, okay, here we go. Where the people are. The combined population of China and India, Jim, makes up 37% of the world's population. Okay. Uh, the U.S.'s population makes up what percentage of the world's population? What, what do you think? Uh, 10%? I don't know. 4%. Oh, okay. And we use a lot of the resources, I bet. A lot of the resources, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, now, just surviving. Out of the okay, China and India, most populous countries in the in the world. Okay, eleven point eight percent of China's population and thirty two point seven percent of India's population live on less than a dollar twenty five cents per day. Mm. What would we if we had to live on a dollar and twenty five cents? <laughs> what could we buy? Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. Could you you could not stop at Starbucks and get something? Could you? No, no, I could not. I would not be sitting here holding my iced coffee. And you have a small one and there. Got, well, a tall one. What? Well, yeah, they but call it's it a, tall a tall one. It's pretty small. Yeah, well, the smallest size they call the tall one. Well, that's a, what's the big? What's the biggest one? Is that the? I don't get the it. Vente. So I the vente. Yeah, okay. You gotta learn the lingo. <clears throat> I you know I don't get I don't drink coffee so I don't know oh, this stuff. Oh, you're lucky. Uh, the vente. Well, I know there's a grande or something, isn't there? Uh, the, the smallest is called the tall. I don't know why they do this. Yeah. Uh, the middle is the grande. The biggest is the vente. Now, vente. supposedly, if you ask for a short one, uh -huh. you'll get one even smaller than the tall one. Oh, okay. I don't know why they don't just call the tall one the short one. Yeah, but because again, it looks pretty short. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. if I rule the world every day, it would be the first day of spring. There we go. Yeah, okay. All right. So anyway, but you could not afford the the tall one at Starbucks. Not on a dollar or whatever it was a day. A day. Yeah. No. Wow. No. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, okay. Oh, well, here we go. Out of work. <clears throat> the national unemployment rate in the USA uh, last week, 5.9% at the end of September. Uh, that was the lowest unemployment rate reported by the government since July 2008. Now, how are they counting that, though? Are they counting the uh, people who gave up, or, or, or is, that the, is that the problem? Well, see, there we go. We've yeah. we've talked about that on the show before, <clears throat> um, how you there's different unemployment rates. There's the U6 and the U12 and the yeah. U13 or whatever. And I think if you look at the, uh, I think it's the U12, uh, the rate is probably closer to 10 Okay. Yeah, so it does depend on how you look at this because this one does not count all the people not. Right. Yeah, so, Okay, uh, when we come back, we're going to get a little, I got some charts on the jobs report that came out last week, and we'll yeah, go through let's that talk about and take that. a look at that. Let's and, delve into it. Let's delve into it. And uh, it's Fleetwood Mac Day Yeah. on Mortgage Talk 101 because Fleetwood Mac is now going out on tour. They're starting their tour in Minneapolis. Christine is back with the band. Christine McVie is back with the yeah. band, and they're going to do a new album, I understand. Yeah. So, Fleetwood Mac Day here. Go your own way. All right. We'll be back. You can go your own way. Get the traffic and weather information you need anytime on Super Talk 1270 and online at supertalk1270.com. Oh, yeah. Secondhand news. All the deep track from. Well, it's Buddy Holly, basically. You know, Lindsay was into Rocket. all those 50 rockabilly guys. It does. Just put Peggy Sue on. Sounds like Peggy Sue? Yeah. yeah. Just think about that and put that on. Actually, that half the album sounds like Buddy Holly. If you listen yeah. to it. Yeah. Peg, Peg, Peg Sue. I, don't, I can't remember how it goes. Yeah. But yeah. Second hand dude. Fit, you, could, you could lay Peggy Sue lyrics right on top of this. Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. No problem. All right. Uh, Dave Floor here. Jim Walsh. No Joe Sheehan yet. He said he's calling. I got a text from him. We were texting just as we came on the air. Okay. And he said he, uh, call will not go through. Hope I get the text. I got it. Yeah. Where I said, we're still waiting. He's out there running around, uh, partying and uh, yeah. having a good time. Probably he's, like it's Burning Man or something. He's like drilling for oil himself probably. Oh, right okay. Now, well, maybe. yeah. Yeah. Hopefully he finds some. I hope he finds some. Yeah. No, I don't. What is, what's a euphemism? 
I don't know, Jim. That's why you say one thing, but mean your mother. Never no, mind. no, no. Okay. I, I got a couple more by the numbers things just because I think they're kind of fun. Uh, Bill Gates, you know him. Oh, yeah. Rich dude. He is the, he's ranked number one as the richest person in the world today. So, person. Okay. How much do you think, how much is he worth today? Um, I'd say about 78 bucks. Okay. 81 billion. Oh. Okay. But, the six living heirs of Sam Walton. No, Sam Walton died in two, 1992. And yeah. for somebody that doesn't know who Sam Walton is, that is Walmart. Walmart. Okay. And Wal Green. The six living heirs of yeah. Sam Walton. How much do you think they are uh, worth combined? They're, they're combined. definitely up there. I, I'm going to say $50 billion. Combined. Combined. Oh, uh, I'm going to say $100 billion. $153 billion Oh. Divided by six. There. So that's like they're... 20, that put 20, out a few 25 fires. billion a piece. Yeah. yeah. Not bad for one family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, and Sam Walton was a Democrat, as I recall. Okay. All right. Baseball playoffs are still going on. We thought right. we gave a little thing on the baseball playoffs last week. Yeah. Um, okay. Royals are looking good. The Royals. Go Royals. Yeah. Hey, you know, but that's a tough one because you got the Royals and the Orioles. Neither yeah. One not like the been Orioles. There. Yeah. Uh, hey, well, you're from, okay. you're from the Baltimore area. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I like the Orioles, but the Royals, they're, one of their farm teams plays in my hometown, Oh, Wilmington, Delaware. Oh, there you the go. Wilmington Blue Rocks. They're okay. like an A-level farm team for the Royals. Okay. All right. So, so you've got, got, you got conflicting yeah. uh, things. So you're good no matter which one of those two teams wins. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like I, I kind of like both, too. I kind of was pulling for the Royals, I guess, but you, know, you can't. Baltimore, it's been a long time since they've been there. Sure. Um, the other one, the Cardinals and the Giants, they're there every year, I think. So this is like a really easy year to pull for the American League. Yeah, I would say Baltimore so. or Kansas City. And anyway. I've always liked the Cardinals. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you can't, you know, they're yeah. good, good organization. Yes. Um, okay, but anyway, uh, from uh, by the numbers here, Moneyball, the three Major League Baseball teams with the highest 2014 opening day payrolls that did not qualify for postseason play. Who do you think? Uh, I would say the Phillies, the Yankees. And the Dodgers. Oh, you're, well, Dodgers were in the playoffs. Oh, the Dodgers. So were. I'll give you another chance at that uh, one. I don't know. I maybe one of the Texas. Teams. Red, the Boston Red Sox. Boston Red Sox. New York has a two hundred nine million dollar payroll. Didn't make the postseason. Philadelphia, one hundred eighty million. Didn't make the postseason. Red Sox, one hundred fifty four million. Didn't make it. And the Red Sox, you know, they won it last year, the whole thing, and they, so they went from first to last place in their division. Mm. That didn't work out too good for them this year. Shoot for them, I guess, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, I promised we were going to look at the uh, jobs reports here. Let me bring it up. Uh, and and anybody wants to call in with any questions, 663-1270, and that goes for Joe also in case he forgot the number now, 663-1270. Uh, and we'll try and answer your questions on mortgages. Now, I promised we were going to talk a little bit about the jobs report that came out last week. And I have this... Uh, Article from the Wall Street Journal. It's September's jobs report in 12 charts. Uh, so this was Friday's report. Looked great on the face of it. We had 340-some thousand jobs were created uh, in the last month, and the unemployment rate dropped to 5.9%. Uh, so everything was looking rosy right on the face. Right, Jim? Right. Looks good. Okay. So let's take a look at it. The unemployment rate dropped to 5.9% in September. Looks good. Okay. Annual job growth uh, was at an eight-year high. Uh, and this is non-farm payrolls. Um, it was up uh, from a year earlier. Is at an eight-year high. And you look at the chart and, you know, boy, 2009 through 2010, it was we were losing jobs at over almost a 7% rate. Right. And now it's been climbing steadily ever since, and last month we hit an eight-year high. Okay. Uh, Year-to-date job growth is at a 15-year high. Uh, and that number, that chart looks kind of about the same. Um, 2009, 2010, big drop, and then the increase. Um, but the improvement in the unemployment rate came in part because more workers left the labor force, which you were just asking that question before. The, that 5.9 unemployment rate, how do they look at that? And right. we look at the other one, the U12, I think U12 or U13, that actually shows the unemployment rate is closer to double digits, like 10%. Mm. 
uh, because of the people that have left the labor force and uh, are not looking actively looking right. for work. Well, we just gave up. Yep. And now uh, the next one, they talk about the labor force participation rate uh, hit a 36-year low. This is the share of civilians in the U.S. labor force, and we are at we are below 63 uh, percent participation rate. And I think I just saw something. Um, in the news here the other day that North Dakota had the highest labor force participation rate at, it was over, it was like 75% or 73%. Yeah. Um, and it, of course, been growing. And you could certainly argue that our labor force participation rate in North Dakota should probably be almost 100% because uh, the number of jobs we have that are unfilled. Um, okay, the share of employed Americans uh, was unchanged. And this is the rate of employment to population ratio. Uh, so despite a strong job, a strong run in job growth this year, there are few signs yet that workers are taking home bigger paychecks. Okay, uh, so we have a share of that. So the, the wages that are going along with the jobs that have been created yeah. are mostly flat. Yeah, that's the question. You have the quantity. Let me get on the microphone. Yeah, I'm a professional prognosticator. Okay, very good. I get paid for doing this. No, no, you. Uh, we, we've talked about this before. The quantity of the jobs out there versus the quality. I mean, you yeah. can have a lot of jobs available, but if they're crap jobs, yeah, you know, are you argument. really any better off? Yeah, you're not. You're not affording the uh, the tall Starbucks. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. flipping, and no, no rap against the people flipping burgers. No. But no. Uh, generally, they don't make a great living. Generally, it's like an entry-level those are, job. Those are meant to be entry-level jobs yeah. for, for high school, and that's college cool. kids. That's trying great. To make, make exactly. Some, make some uh, spending money. And a, or and older maybe folks retiree, who want to stay, keep their hand, you know. A retiree, just workforce. something to do and some sure. spending money. Nothing wrong with that. But yeah. you can't really make a living that way if you're right. a regular yeah. adult. They weren't necessarily the... The uh, checkout person at Wal at yeah at Walmart or or at McDonald's that's not what it's meant for. It's not a career necessarily. Yeah, unless you really like this and you want to go on and become a manager of a McDonald's. Well, store I think we're in a period of flux with the changes yeah. in the technology and the uh, society. Yeah, I think it's going to be a while before everything shakes out and we have a really stable economy again. Yeah. Uh, in so the meantime, I, you know, we just got to muddle e through. I guess even though we have this job growth, what they're looking at with these charts is that. Wages are flat, so right. we're we're creating jobs, but the wages are not increasing. You really look at this, and the average weekly hours, average weekly earnings, and average uh, hourly earnings yeah. is basically a flat line going back to uh, looks like January of 2012. So mm -hmm. the last over two years, almost three years now, yeah. wages have been flat. Now that makes it hard for people to afford uh, increases in rent uh, or to afford. To buy a house, yeah. If I mean, your wages talk, are flat, yeah. yeah. I remember talking about this. I don't know if it was with you guys, mm -hmm. but the fact that you have uh, you have cost of living going up in this state, yeah, and you have taxes going up and everything going up. The one thing that isn't going up as fast, the one thing that isn't really keeping up, are salaries. Salaries, yeah, yeah. It's hard, um, you know, and. We look at uh, you know prices, and they say you know inflation is low and everything, uh, but. You to predict what it, what is going to happen to prices of products is pretty tough going out the long term. I think. Yeah. You know how do you how do you prognosticate that? Uh, because you know, like now they're talking about the drought in California, how the effect that that's going to have on food prices. So our food prices are likely to go up starting this winter. Now yeah. oil oil prices have gone down because the dollar has uh, strengthened so much, and that makes our oil cheaper. Yeah. Um, so a there's been some relief at the gas pump, but not, you know, is that going to offset the increases in, in food costs? I was going to say, I do hear that gas prices are going to drop. Yeah. And they're, by Christmas, we'll be below $3. They were talking about below $3, yeah, yeah. which would, which would be great. And it wouldn't hurt. It, not, nobody's going to argue about it. No. Uh, except maybe the, if, how that affects our uh, Bakken area up here. But, yeah. um, no, uh, also, with this this article in the Wall Street Journal, the, the charts here, uh, several member measures that we look at them show that slack in a job job market while high has been moving in the right direction. Okay, yeah. um, workers who are part time for economic reasons fell. Yeah. Okay? Um, so involuntary part time workers as a share of the labor force has fallen, which that's good. 
depression yeah. or involuntary and long-term unemployment. Uh, people, you know, more than 27 weeks unemployed, that's been falling. Yeah. So people aren't out there receiving unemployment benefits for that extended period, which is a good thing. Um, so, you know, you hear the, uh, you hear these numbers out there and you, you get the, you get the first face of it, the 5.9% unemployment dropped right. and all that stuff, but you have to keep looking and see what those numbers really mean. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about what some of those numbers actually show. Oh, well. Okay. Don't ask me what I think of you. I might not give the answers that you want me to. Right now, 46. Get the app called Radio Pup for your iPhone and take us everywhere you go. Biz Market Man Dan's own Super Talk 1270. Fleetwood Mac Day here at Mortgage Talk 101. The chain. From rumors... We'll let that play. Yeah, that's cool. Listen to the wind blow. Listen to the wind blow in mortgage bill. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, folks. Mortgage Talk 101. Dave Floor here with uh, Jim Walsh, Joe mm-hmm. Sheehan. I guess he. We could say now he's on special assignment. <laughs> okay. Under deep cover. Because Joel is going to call in at 663-1270 if you have any questions. Well, or that's why he grew the beard, so nobody would recognize he's under, him. He's in deep cover, apparently. Yeah. He's he's being incognito this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I hope everything's going okay. He said he couldn't get any cell service. Uh, pretty spotty up there, I guess. So yeah. So, he couldn't get the call to come through. Uh, but anyway, we've been talking about uh, uh, the jobs report that came out last week and kind of the numbers behind the numbers, as we like to say here on Mortgage Talk 101. Uh, a couple other things left on that. Um, uh, there, despite improving labor markets, uh, there are some sectors where the job growth isn't really ignited, and one of those is construction jobs. Um, now, obviously, in North Dakota, construction jobs have certainly ignited. Not a problem. Uh, but across the country, there it's kind of slow. Uh, the chart shows... Uh, the construction growth in jobs right around four and a half or about four point two five percent, maybe is slowly climbing after a large uh, decline back in two thousand and eight. Um, so though that's slowly coming back across the country uh, outside of North Dakota. Um, and here's one: some people might might find this interesting. Government jobs still lag below pre-recession levels. Mm. Now I think that's probably a good thing. Most people would probably say that's okay, if government jobs are not increasing. What do you think? What do you? What's your opinion there, Jim? If government jobs are not increasing, yeah, probably a good thing. I suppose. I suppose on the face of it, yep. But yeah, uh, all government jobs is basically flat uh, over the last two years. Uh, federal jobs are still decreasing, and state and local government jobs are slightly increasing uh, over the last. Uh, Two years or so. Uh, now the private sector jobs, uh, private sector providing jobs or service jobs. This is interesting. They show the largest increase. Service jobs. Um, total non-farm and total private are both climbing very steadily and are above uh, the the growth in them have are higher uh, than zero percent. There's no decline anymore, and they are steadily growing over the uh, government sector, which I think most people say that's a good thing if there's more private jobs being uh, created than government jobs. Now, uh, another thing behind the numbers on this, uh, this article we're going to look at comes from uh, Zero Hedge. And if you ever have never heard of this uh, site, this guy called Tyler Durden, I think he must like be the person that uses the internet more than anybody else in the world. Okay. Because he has this website. And it's basically, it's like a blog. He's not writing all this stuff. He, he writes some of it and he, he'll put in other people's art articles and stuff in this, but it is just a huge amount of information. Um, and this guy, I, he, he must use the internet more than anybody else in the world. Um, but he talks about the jobs number that came out, a uh, report that came out last week. And he looks at, he looked, he dived down into say, well, what was the age groups that were being hired? And what he is saying here is that, whoops, I got to get it back here, uh, is that grandparents 
is we're only hiring grandparents, Jim. Okay. Uh, that was the largest increase. Nope, oh, I'm not going to get the article back up here. Here we go. Uh, he, he says, the further one digs into the blockbuster, quote marks, jobs report, the uglier it gets because it's not only the participation rate collapse, which you just mentioned, yeah. the slide in average earnings, which we talked about, but topping it all off, we just learned that the future of the U.S. workforce is bleak. In fact, with the age of the median employed male now in their mid-40s, the U.S. workforce has never been older. Case in point, the September data confirmed that the whopping surge in jobs was thanks to your grandparents. Those in the 55 to 69 age group comprised, ah. comprised the vast majority of the job additions in the month at a whopping 230,000 jobs. This was the biggest monthly jobs increase in the 55 and over age group since February. Now, the total number of jobs created, job additions, for that month was 340. Mm -hmm. So almost uh, two-thirds of that was people in the 55 to 69 age group. Uh, so what about the prime worker demographic? That's ages between 25 and 54. Uh, and that's, you know, that would be, boy, we get a, that age group working. That's going to propel everything forward, right? They lost 10,000 jobs in that age group. No. Oh. Dope is right. Yeah, where's uh, Homer Simpson when we need him there, huh? Dope. Okay, so this is not good. Um, but then he goes on to say, Tyler goes on to say, then in retrospect, it has never been a stronger labor market. Well, if you're 55 and over, obviously it is. Uh, yeah. we, that age group just hit a record 32.6 million jobs. Um, so this is not, you know, that's the thing. The numbers behind the numbers, and that's kind of our lead in on the show here. And that really is something you do have to look at uh, when you see some of these government reports um, that, you know, they, the media will put out the, the big number, uh, the 5.9% unemployment rate and the participation rate and all that stuff. But you start digging into that numbers and it's like, oh boy, uh, this doesn't look so great. Um, and certainly... Everybody 55 to 69 getting jobs, while it's wonderful for those people, if we're losing jobs in the younger category, that is not good. Yeah. Um, just not good. All right. So that's it. That's all I got on the jobs thing, Jim. You got anything else you want to impart on that one? I don't um, know. What can I say? We're not. I'm not quite there. I'm not in that 55 to 69 group. I'm well, not I there. Am. Are you? Oh, okay. Yeah. And I am working. You got I'm, a job. You had a job, school. though. Yeah, yeah you didn't a, get a new job, so you got a job. Right. You had a job. Gig. Yeah, okay. For the time being. Yeah. All right. So what does that mean for mortgages? Well, not not very good. If you've got people 25 to 59 or 25 to 54, uh, and they are not, that's the prime age group for uh especially the 30-year-olds the for buying houses, and they are the job growth for them and the job prospects for them are that low, that's, that's not very good for, uh, for mortgage uh, yeah. business. Um, so hopefully, but you know, obviously in North Dakota, I think that numbers are probably reversed maybe. Yeah. Uh, I would say our job growth is probably in the younger sector versus the older one. A lot of older people are probably able to retire earlier because of what's happened in this in, in our state. So yeah. those are all good things. No. Um let's talk a little bit here. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about tight credit. We've talked about that on the show here before. Tight credit. Oh yeah. You know, our lending standards too tight and we're restricting borrowers from uh getting a loan and all that stuff. Well Ben Bernanke Famous Ben, we know him. He used to run the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Till he retired here uh, at the beginning of the year, and Janet Yellen took his place. Ben wanted to go refinance his mortgages, Jim. Did you know that? Oh, he did. did he, he wanted to refinance his mortgage, and he was talking to. He was making some speech somewhere where he was getting two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the speech. Um. Let's see. What was he doing here? Uh. He was. He was somewhere. Re, uh. Giving a speech. Um, but anyway, here, here's Ben, Ben was told people at this, at this, uh, event that he couldn't get a more, he couldn't get his mortgage refinanced. Um, no, a couple of reasons why maybe he couldn't. Well, he changed jobs. Well, yeah. Yeah. He had a steady job and he quit it. He uh, retired. So that's, that's a problem. A while, dude. That's a problem. Yeah. So, you know, you, as a lender, you look at that and you say, okay, well, you left that employment and now you're on the speaking trail and maybe you're going to probably write a book. Mm -hmm. 
But we don't know how much money you're going to make for that. Yeah. So I'm sorry, you haven't been at that. You haven't been doing the speaking thing for for two years. So we, you know, standards say we can't we can't lend you the money. Okay. Um, now, what else? We, what other reasons could he have? Um, you know, if, if Mr. Bernanke specifically, somebody went out here uh, and dug up the information on his mortgage, which is all public records. Um, he lives on uh, Capitol Hill. Uh, he and what his wife bought it in 2004 for $839,000. Okay. He refinanced it in 2009 and again in 2011. Now, credit is not necessarily any tighter now than it was back in 2011. And home prices have gone up since then. So he, his house may have gone down in value, but it probably has gone back up also. Right. Um, so we talk his, uh, his change in employment situation. His loan, another thing was uh, that could affect his ability to refinance is it's too big to qualify for government backing, meaning he has a jumbo loan. Yeah. So the lender was going to make this loan. He could not put it into a uh, you know, Ginnie Mae or a Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae security. Um, so it, it, it falls under the jumbo loan category. So his lender might not have been able to do that. Um, the it was reported in 2011 that he owed 672000 on his mortgage after refinancing it in 2011. Um, and at that time, the, the re, his refinance closed days before the conforming loan limit. The maximum amount that qualifies for backing from Fannie and Freddie in the D.C. area dropped right after he did that refinancing. Oh. Uh, and it dropped uh, to 625500 the previous limit was seven hundred twenty-nine thousand, so it dropped over a hundred thousand um, dollars. He since then, you know, he probably hasn't substantially paid down the principal on that loan, so he probably has not paid down a hundred over a hundred thousand dollars of uh, mortgage debt there. So he just simply is caught in a little box. Yeah. Um, where hey, I you know I switched jobs. I can't, my home is above the conforming loan limit, mm-hmm. so it falls into this other category, but it makes it harder to refinance. So, kind of caught in the middle there. So they made this big story hey, about Ben Bernanke Monday. couldn't refinance his loan. Well, guess what? There's a good, there's valid reasons for it that affects Jim, you and I, yeah. and everybody else out there looking to get a mortgage or refinance their mortgage. Yeah. Welcome the to my thing. world. Welcome dude. to our world, yeah. Mr. Bernanke. Yeah. Okay. So we're going out on a uh, little Fleetwood Mac. What do we got here, Jim? Everywhere. Everywhere. Which album was this on? Uh, it was uh, late 80s, 88, I think. Okay. Whatever album that was. Okay. I don't know which album that was. All right. We'll be back on Mortgage Talk 101 with some more. We, we're not sure what we got left. We'll see. <laughs> okay. All right. Right now, 48. Sean Hannity, weekdays at 2, only on Super Doc 1270. Okay. We got Fleetwood Mac, early Fleetwood early. Mac. Deep tracks here, Jim. Yeah. We're pulling them all out. This Albatross. Is Albatross, okay. From the tail end of the Peter Green era. Okay, high, so this as is I be, before Lindsey Buckingham. Yeah, Stevie right. Before Nicks. Buckingham Nicks and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. when they were still a very bluesy flavored. Yes. Yeah. Outfit. They were. I. I actually really like the early Fleetwood Mac. With, Me too. Uh, Peter Green was the primary driver of that group. Yeah, he uh, was he an was amazing just talent. Singer and guitar Burned player. Burned himself out completely. It's yeah. a sad story. Yeah, he mental illness. I yeah. believe was his problem. He actually has come back a little bit though. He's yeah. He's done some some work lately and uh, since like the mid nineties, I think. But yeah, yeah. I think he kind of went the Sid Barrett route, except that in his case, he did manage to recover he didn't, yeah, somewhat. He didn't, yeah, didn't kill himself. Yeah. All right. Well, folks, Mortgage Talk One Hundred and One, Dave Floor here with Jim Walsh on the board. Uh, Joe Sheehan, he was supposed to call in at six six three twelve seventy. He's somewhere like out there in the Bakken running around. But he is in the Bakken. He's doing he's doing work. He's under deep cover. Uh, he can he's apparently cannot get any cell service where he's at, so he's not able to call in. Um, although the text worked. He sent me a text, and that worked. Okay. So, but that that's completely different. I'm sure. I don't know how does that technology work. Do you know? I have no. idea. It's the idea. same tower, right? We it, need Marlo Anderson here. To it's the same those tower. Questions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, maybe maybe uh, Monday Marlo's on, right? Yeah. Ask we'll talk to Marlo Monday. Ask him that, that question. Yeah. Okay. If you send a text and and you're trying to call, is that the same? Are they using the same uh, tower? The same uh, uh, point of uh, you know moving the information around? Yeah. And does a uh, 
you know, you get drop cell phone service, but does that affect texting at all? So I don't know. That'd be a good question for Marlo. I'm not an engineering okay. guy. I'm not either. Okay. All right. Let's talk a little bit something about um, mortgages here. Maybe we should. What do you think, Jim? Uh, do tell. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Uh, boy, I you know, I, I keep like beating the dead horse here, but I'm going to talk about <laughs> the $83 billion threat to the housing market, Jim. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? Uh, it's a lot of, yeah. But, you know, guess what it is? It's student loan debt. Uh, another another article on student loan debt. This the comes old eighty five whatever student loan debt trick. Yes, and this comes from the Motley Fool. They're an investment site. Yeah, uh, if I know you have heard guys. of them. Yep. Sure. Um, but they say that you know they they're saying that the link between high levels of student loan debt and the housing recovery have certainly been in discussion, and. It has caused a dearth of first-time home buyers. Has pushed home ownership rates down to the lowest level in almost 20 years. Now, the thing that they go go here, uh, mortgages, the debt matters more than ever uh, because of the way the credit market is these days. The number crunching involved in the analysis puts real heft behind the argument that student debt is holding housing back. Yeah. The report estimates that heavy college debt will reduce real estate sales by eight percent this year. And that households that pay seven hundred and fifty dollars or more for college loan debt each month are priced out of the housing market entirely. Um, uh, the recent analysis done by the Wall Street Journal uh, highlighted this issue. When uh, looking at mortgage applications of those with student loan debt, approved borrowers had monthly college loan payments of about three hundred dollars. Mortgage applicants paying nearly five hundred dollars per month, however, were usually denied. Uh, and this has grown out of recent deal because of the mortgage rules that were instituted last January with the qualified mortgage rules. Um, each $250 um, of debt paid uh, paid towards student debt reduces the amount a household can borrow for a home by a minimum of $44,000. Okay, so now, Jim, you're going to college. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you got student debt or not. doesn't matter. Nobody oh, needs, yeah. nobody I mean, needs to know. It's piling up. I, uh, nobody needs to know. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Nobody okay. needs to know your situation, but you're you're... You're in that boat. You're a college student. Well, I mean, I'm. So, yeah, I, I just finished. I got my bachelor's, and I'm yeah. working on my master's okay. in math. Yeah. yeah. So and okay. So, so you're you're coming out of college, and uh, if you wanted to buy a house, and okay, I got I got to make a two hundred fifty dollar loan payment on my student debt. Yeah. And that doesn't seem too bad. That's less than a lot of car payments are probably going to be right these days if you buy a new car or even a good used car. But it, it you know two hundred fifty dollars that doesn't sound that bad. No. Okay. But it affects the amount you can buy borrow on a home by forty four thousand dollars. Okay, now you take that and put that in Bismarck and Mandan here, where the average price of a home I think last month that was in the two hundred twenty thousand dollar range. Okay, yeah. so in, in, instead of being able, based on your job, of course, um, and how much you're earning there, obviously makes a difference. Yeah. Um, but if you're looking at, okay, I could have bought the average. Home price two hundred twenty five thousand or something, but now because of the student loan payment, boy, I can only afford to pay one hundred and eighty. Uh-huh. That's a big difference in what I'm going to be able to find for a house in town. So th- this is a it is definitely a big deal, and we've certainly talked a lot about it here on on Mortgage Talk yeah. One Hundred One. Um, uh, the in the other thing, so f- that creates this lack of first time home buyers in the market, and yeah. how that hurts the housing recovery. If you've got fewer buyers that are looking for the lower priced homes, um, anybody that's looking to you know trade up to a more expensive home or uh, just a larger home because their family's grown, they're kind of stuck too. So you got the first time home buyer that's stuck because they can't afford something, and you have the current homeowners that would like to change their housing situation for yeah. various reasons are kind of stuck because there's not enough buyers. Um, and if they've got a mortgage that they've got to pay off in order to get a, buy a new place, that that creates a somewhat of a problem. Um, you know, and they go on uh, higher prices and constrained inventories likely affected the ability of younger buyers to purchase a home, and that certainly uh, is an effect here in North Dakota. We've got higher prices than we we're used to, and uh, the inventory is is mm-hmm. down. Um, but still, student debt is certainly plays a part in that. Um, Now, only 22% of 30-year-olds with student debt also held a mortgage in 2013. Okay, that's down from nearly 34% just five years ago. Okay, so that means that I'm 30 years old. Yeah. 
and I've got student debt. Yeah, you're thirty. And I had a more, and I have a mortgage. Okay, right. there was more of us five years ago than there is today. So certainly that 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 all these factors kind of fit together. Mm-hmm. Um, no, you know, boy, that sounds like is housing doomed. Um, you know, I think people probably think that the market's going to you know pick up in the next few years, and the economy is going to improve and wages rise. Okay, we don't. We just looked at these charts that showed us that wages are right now are pretty flat. Um, there are jobs being uh, uh, created out there, but most of those jobs last month went to the age group 55 to 69, who probably already own a home. Yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe not, but and are probably, if they don't own a home, probably are unlikely going to buy one at that age too. Not many of them would. Um so is that, you know, what's the effect on the housing market with this? Um, no, that millennial, millennial age group, that, what, 25 to 34 or something is, is that, is that the age range for millennials, Jim? Somewhere in there, right? Something 25 like to 30 something. I think it's like um, 1980 roughly. Or... You know, there's been, you know, there's been surveys done and all that stuff here yeah. lately about this because this is a big deal. You know, are, are these people even interested in owning a home? Do they just want to rent because they want the flexibility of being able to move they and there are good arguments for both. Yeah, they positions. don't expect to keep the same job or work okay. at the same place very long, so they want to be able to be mobile. And so let's just rent and and uh, move on. Which is, you know, like you just said, there's pros and cons both ways. Yeah. Um, but the, there's been some surveys done of this age group, and 65 percent of them still think home ownership embodies the American dream and are would be interested in buying a house. But they really feel constrained by uh, the credit market out there, and their student loan debt is weighing on them and whatnot. So, uh, interesting things how this will work out in the marketplace. Um, and certainly, we've talked on the show about you know how much should the government uh, policies have a play in this, or do you just let the market uh, work itself through these issues? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if people are ready to buy a home; they're going to buy a home. Uh, we shouldn't push it on them. Uh, you know, let let people make that decision, and the market will kind of fix itself going around. I, you know, I, I don't know which way is the best way. Probably the the private market letting that work is probably the best option in the long run. Yeah, in the long who, run. The problem is the long it. run. You know, nobody yeah. wants to wait it out for the long yeah. run because in the short run, people got to eat, they got to have a place to live, uh, yeah. they got to pay their bills, yeah. and so on. So anyway, so uh, you know, we're kind of wrapping things up here for the day, but we talked about uh, the jobs report from last month. Or, or last week, and and what the actual number behind the numbers were there, the effect of all this uh, policy that's happened, and uh, you know the unemployment rate looks good, but hey, the job job growth is okay, but it's all yeah. going to older people, and the wages are pretty flat. Uh, the largest increase was in the service sector, so you probably got a lot of fifty-five to sixteen-year nine-year-olds that are working in service jobs. Uh, etc. So it's all uh, interesting numbers. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, next week, I think Joe will be back because I know I'm not here. Okay. I'm out of town. So anyway, um, I will not be here. So hopefully Joe will be back next week on Mortgage Talk 101. And we're going out. It's Fleetwood Mac Day on Mortgage Talk 101 because they were going out on tour and they were going to make a new album, we understand. Yeah. So anyway, don't stop. And we'll see you next week. Excel CR. We'll listen to you or hear you next week on Mortgage Talk 101. All right.